1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Daniel. And for those of you who have not been following along, we've been going through our series on Daniel and he's already gotten in good favor with the king. Uh, we've seen that he and his friends have been allowed to just eat the vegetables, just drink the water. And so now Daniel and his friends are sort of established in the king's court. And then we kind of shift over in the second chapter to an episode that is going on with the king of Babylon. Now, at this point, Daniel and his friends are not really in the king's presence. They're not really old enough to practice. They're not really old enough to be around the king, that he has other magicians and wise men surrounding him that handle this kind of thing. And so in the second chapter, we're introduced to King Nebuchadnezzar. And the king has this dream, and he sends for his magicians. And he talks to the Chaldeans and his magicians and other soothsayers and that kind of thing. And he says, I want you to interpret my dream. And they keep saying, oh, we'll, we'll interpret your dream. Go ahead. Tell us what the dream was about. And he says, no, I want you to tell me what the dream was. And then I'll know that whatever interpretation that you give me is valid. In other words, you knowing what my dream was is sort of the test. And if I know that you got the dream correctly, you know what I was dreaming, then I'll also know that your interpretation of it, your understanding of it is correct. And the, uh, the Chaldeans don't much like this. And the king actually declares that whoever says, oh, I know what it was, uh, and then they come up with something fake, you are to be executed. And so this is a very risky proposition that he wants to know what this dream is. And if you come up to him and you lie to him and give him a false answer, then you're going to be executed and taken away. So this is the response that we see from the Chaldeans, the magicians there. This takes place in Daniel chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. The Chaldeans answered to the king and said, There is not a man on earth who could declare this matter for the king, insomuch as no great king or ruler has ever asked anything like this of any magician, conjurer, or Chaldean. Moreover, the thing which the king demands is difficult, and there is no one else who could declare it to the king except gods, whose dwelling place is not with mortal flesh. So really what this all boils down to is the Chaldeans, the magicians there, can't tell him what the dream is, is because they're fakes. They're not real magicians. They're people that do sleight of hand, and they are probably very well educated and can tell people things about nature. But as far as actual having supernatural powers, it seems based on this that they're fakes. They can't see into people's dreams. They can't read into people's hearts. They can do a card trick for you, maybe, if cards existed back then. But they can't actually do anything supernatural or something that, that has something to do with that realm. And so because they're fakes, they can't really do what the king is asking them to do. And they're saying, well, kings don't ask us to do that, which is no king has ever asked us to do that. And that's why we don't do it. And the king is like, you're supposed to be my wise men. You're supposed to be the magicians and people that deal with the supernatural. And yet you can't even tell me what my dream is. See, this is the thing. The king, reasonable as he may be or not, is catching on to the fact that these guys aren't really who they say they are. And then we get this really interesting dialogue from the Chaldeans where they sort of accidentally proclaim the truth. And I love the way that the Bible structures this. They accidentally, not knowing it, tell him what the problem is, which is they say, if you'll look back in verse 10, that there is not a man on earth that can do this. Well, they're right. There's not a man on earth that can do this. There is no human being that can tell another human being what their dream was that they dreamed and be able to interpret it to them. The only way anybody could do that is if God did so, that if God informed somebody of the person's dream. And you'll remember that we were looking back at our, our previous episode in episode one, or sorry, in chapter one, that Daniel has the ability to interpret dreams. 
Which means what? That he's getting that gift from somewhere that is not on this earth. A man on this earth cannot interpret a person's dream. But God can. And so because Daniel has God to inform him, to tell him how to do this, it's God doing the interpreting. It's God that knows what Nebuchadnezzar's dream is because he knows all things. It's not Daniel. And Daniel knows that. Daniel knows that his gift is not his. It's not something that comes from him. And so these magicians sort of accidentally, even though they're fakes and don't really know what's going on, they sort of accidentally proclaim the truth, which is that there is not a man on earth that can do the thing that the king is asking of them. And he also says here uh, in verse 11, this could, only be, this could not be done by any man except the gods whose dwelling place is not with mortal flesh. Now they're talking about pagan gods there, of course, but the point is they're saying that the only person that could do this is a God that does not have mortal flesh. See, that's really significant because, again, this is pointing to the real God. This is pointing to the God that is going to interpret the stream for Nebuchadnezzar. And they unknowingly explain to the king exactly what is going to happen. They kind of set the table for what is about to happen with Daniel and with God. And God does this a few times in Scripture. For example, at the trial of Jesus, um, you see that, or sorry, not at the trial of Jesus, before the trial of Jesus, you see all the, the big wigs, the elders, and the Pharisees coming together. And one of the things that the high priest there says is that it's better for one man to die than for a nation to perish. And now he was talking about, he was afraid that Jesus was going to bring Israel down. And because of that, he said, well, what we need to do is we need for him to die so that the rest of the nation can be spared. He didn't realize he was actually proclaiming prophecy by saying that by one man's death, the entire earth will be saved. And so he, this happens a few times in scripture. There's also at the crucifixion, the Roman soldier asserting well, this really was the son of God. You also have pagan priests in the Old Testament that kind of uh, unintentionally testify to God being the real God. And this is just one more instance of that where these pagan magicians, it turns out they sort of accidentally tell the truth when it comes to God and his power and who actually has the ability to do the things that the king is asking for. And so God sort of in his own way primes the king to know who he is through Daniel. And there are times where God does this, not just in Bible times, but in our own times, I believe. There are certain people that are just super receptive to the gospel. And I think that part of the reason that that is the case is because something has already transpired in their life where God is there. And he is setting the table. He knows this person wants to accept the gospel, that their heart is going to be good soil for the gospel to grow. And because of that, he sets them up in such a way that they're already primed by the time the minister or evangelist or whoever it is, the saint comes by and teaches them about the gospel. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch is a perfect example. Here you have a eunuch writing by himself that just happens to be reading a scroll of Isaiah and happens to be reading a part that's talking about the prophecy of Jesus. And along comes Philip and is like, okay, well, that was easy. <laughs> God's already done the legwork. He's already laid the groundwork for evangelism to take place. And so I think that's another thing that we have to be aware of is Daniel basically waltzes in and the king already kind of has the right idea about what's going to happen if someone can interpret his dream. Because if he's listening to his magicians, it means that whoever interprets his dream will not be a man on this earth, and it will not be somebody with flesh, but a god. Somebody that does not dwell in mortal flesh. And so God has kind of primed the pump here, primed it, and gotten him ready to accept this truth. And this is something that we need to be aware of in our own lives when we evangelize to other people. It's not always going to be easy. Most people are probably going to turn us down. But the truth is that if it's somebody that God knows is going to be receptive, actually, even if he doesn't know, God is laying the groundwork. God is already laying the groundwork for that to happen because he's already seeking that lost soul. And sometimes all that needs to happen is for somebody like Daniel to come along and proclaim God's truth because God has already set the soil to be receptive. 
That is a really inspiring thing to think about because when we declare God's truth, sometimes God has already done the groundwork for us. All we have to do is follow his command and spread the seed. Stay the course, friends. This is normally the part of the video where I tell you to go ahead and like and subscribe, but the truth is, I really don't care whether you do or not. I mean, it's not like you really need all the latest news and commentary from me. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world and in the state of Alabama right now that you should probably be aware of. So, you know what? Like and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.